the Billy Gar, the Ray Finned Fish, the Long Nose Gar. They've been in North America for 100 million years. Being a primitive group of bony fish, they have primitive features. They're, they have a spiral valve. These fish have a valve. Corkscrew shaped lower portion of the intestine of some sharks, blah, blah, blahs, rays, lungfish have it. It increases the surface area of the intestinal lining, helps them increase nutrient absorption. Very specific fun fact to start off the fun facts on long nose gar right there. They can really suck the nutrients out of stuff. This is a very specifically evolved fish. It's been around long enough to become a finely tuned weird little fish that can live in lots of different situations. They have a needle-like snout that's three times the length of its head. And by head I guess they mean the a nose is a part of a head. It can't be three times the length of itself. We're talking different dimensions right there. They have unnecessarily sharp cone-shaped teeth. I've started to think that maybe in the last video the reason the leader broke is because there were gar just stabbing my leader with their very sharp cone-shaped teeth and it could have could have broke up some wires in there and broke my leader. Who knows? The owner of Lucky Lures messaged me. He said he's going to give me a version 3 once it comes out of the pike because that leader broke and he just wants to give me another bait because that's just very unfortunate, you know? And I bought a bunch of leader material. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start to make my own, so it's my fault if that happens. I love taking fault. These long-nosed fish breathe air and water. That's special. So it does not matter if they are in very low-level oxygen water because they can breathe air. That is the distribution of this fish in all the places that they live. These things will just like tear up little bullhead catfish, bluegills, all the bait fish in the area. There can be a lot of them. And then like everything else in the river, that's a dangerous little swarm of fish because they like striking anything. You can drag a lure across where they are when they're there and you'll get like 20 hits. If you're lucky, you might snag one. People around here say they're good to eat too. Maybe they are, you know? They seem like a lively little pecker. A peppy little spitfish. Good muscle, robust. Maybe it does have good meat on it. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, in Missouri, 98% of their diet is just shiners. But when it comes to if they eat game fish or not, that's found to only consist of 1% of their diet is some type of game fish. You would think what they eat would be just completely chewed up and torn and unidentifiable because it's having to go through a long, weird mouth into a little hole with a bunch of teeth. How do they even know? Scales. It's a shiner scale, it's a bass scale. I'm just talking to myself right now. But yeah, when it comes to if the long nose gar is a trash fish, it's not. It's It's been here longer than most and is a part of the original ecology and where it lives. So you shouldn't just like kill this fish. That would be the same thing as like killing a walleye when you see it, no matter what. All walleye you see, you die. I, I know for a lot of people that's the case, but <laughs> the maximum recorded lifespan of this fish is 39 years. That's pretty old for a fish. Average is 15 to 20. The females are larger. It says the eggs have a toxic adhesive coating. These fish's eggs are toxic and it helps them stick to the substrate. And then they're disposed onto stones in shallow water, rocky shelves, vegetation, or smallmouth bass nests. So they'll just fall into other fish's nests and hatch there in seven to nine days. And they hang out in that vegetation for the first summer of their life. They'll grow to a maximum length of six feet long. I would love to catch a six foot long nose gar. Average of more like 48 inches, 122 centimeters. 55 pounds is big. That's a six footer. It's about 55 pounds of long nose garage. This is a robust, very adept. Doesn't matter how many people hate them or kill them. Like they're gonna stick around because they're very finely tuned to where they're at. They will survive. No management of this species is being conducted because they don't need it. Good for the long nose gar. Fun facts are over.
Time to plant some pine trees. Down there. <laughs> You want me to do it? You might. You watch out, shovel sharp. A chicken! A chicken? That's a goose. Oh no, bro! Maybe I flat all in. What do you find? Ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if we could have cut the string out of here. I put the joint hardware in the bait. We got that huge, long, funky line tie. I figured that was the best way to do that. I mean, that's gotta add strength to the whole nose. Steel in there, super glue and baking soda. Absolutely invincible. Let's see what it does. Still need to carve out all the spines and stuff on the fins and shape them, but let's just see. Without the fins. Uh, that floats pretty hard. Let's get some hooks on it. That ain't much better. Let's load it up, I guess. Hopefully that's enough for this piece and it doesn't just sink like this because it probably will because I couldn't put any up here. Maybe on either side of the wire. Okay, hopefully that's enough. We got a straight up hole in this bait. Okay. What are we going to do? Emergency. Bait surgery. This is crazy. I can't describe what I'm doing. Somehow that worked. It's pretty flush with the opening at the bottom of that slot. And there's a nice bed of super gluing baking soda at the bottom of that hole, so not too bad. Don't you guys love close up footage of somebody drilling in their hand? Okay, that should help out a lot. A little bit in the front, a little bit in the back, bunch in the middle. Let's see what that did. Well, that piece sinks. That sank pretty straight. But it's sinking too fast. I removed a lot of lead. Like a lot, a lot. I drilled out all the way through on that one. I think it's gonna be pretty spot on though. I was right. It's hard to see this bowl. I know, I got a test tank that's not even filled up with water yet. I... This is, that's perfect though. Thank you. 
I just made a pretty big decision. It's going to get a clear coat. I put a little bit of black and gold on the top. I'm gonna stay away from those cavities where the fins go in. Oh, and this has some color shift in it. Blues, greens, golds. Smidget of red flake. That's gonna do stuff, yeah. So at some point, I did not wait long enough to start applying paint and sealant and such, and there's some discoloration. That's why I'm putting a clear coat on it right now. It might not work, and then I'm just gonna live with my horrible choices, but let's try this for now. So I'm gonna have to come back to this in like an hour and make certain that the epoxy is covering those trouble spots. So after a little bit of white paint and a clear coat, that looks 40 times better. We have some clean surfaces to paint on now. That black, gold, and red flake with the color shift looking fantastic as well. This stuff actually smells horrible, like rotten. I've gone through multiple containers of this stuff and that's the way it's supposed to smell, like hot, rotten garbage. Masking fluid. Pick up a bottle at your local craft store and take a sniff, it's not pleasant. I really don't want any paint over those teeth, so it's getting masked as well. We have mesh, window screen. Every scale's gonna get some wicked platinum. Super light chartreuse. Wicked fast back green. The colors are going on. Time to see if that looks any good. That looks gary, very gary. Theeth, thouth, gareth. That looks pretty good. I always go for color, but if you back up, there's not that much color. But if you get close, you can see that color, nice and balanced. Let's start peeling on that face. Trying to put some gar-like marks on it. They have spots and kind of like lines. That worked pretty good. Gold will be the first color going on all of the fins. Still with some translucency. Now the tips of the back sides of all of those fins are gonna get some pearl wine, wine pearl, and a little bit on the others. That's nice. Okay, I got seven and nine millimeter foil adhesive backed. We're gonna put the nine millimeter right on. I guess that's what right on means. It's gonna have a really big bulbous eye with a lot of reflection behind it. This is gonna look pretty intense. But with these, I wanna paint them a different color before it goes on. That gave it a nice dull yellow sheen instead of silver. I have no clue if Gar even have yellow in their eye, but that'll look good. I'll put a pupil over that and then the glass. Maybe it won't look good, who knows? Not me, I'm gonna put some red in there too. Why not? Grab a little bit of alcohol right here. This is too much color. That left some of that other color in the cracks and crevices, so it's there. But once we get the pupil on that and put the glass over, I think that will still look like a very interesting eye. I went way overboard on the color. Cool, man. 
Now I just have to put on all of the fins and clear coat it. The fins are gonna get put on with five minute epoxy. That'll really bring this whole thing together. This will be a pretty crazy looking bait. Ew, there's bubbles. Is this gonna be the bubbly eyed gar? Maybe I can torch them out. I don't think there's any torching those out. I think I need to remove this eye, clean my fingers and get a new one. I'm gonna add a little bit more epoxy because I took some when I removed that eye. Then I'm gonna torch it. And this should be a lot better. I guess it's just gonna kind of be bubbly. The shimmer that the iris of that eye puts off though, I really like that. Really thin line because it's a different piece of foil. Stunning. It's got three hooks. Much better chance of catching a fish now, if something bites it. Slipped the joint hardware in there. It was no issue at all. Everything is straight as an arrow. We'll see how it lasts with just the fins being glued in and then clear coated over as well. Some fins might pop off of this today. I just really hope not to lose it. Cause it can sit up cool like that on a table. Perfect for display. Starting the day off. At a pond, I need to get my phone. We need to take a thumbnail. Sorry fellas, but thumbnails come first. <laughs> it is an absolute missile. I could get a fish right now before even seeing the action. You know, now that I think about it, it comes in exactly as you think it would. Very, very straight. <laughs> this comes in extremely straight. Wow. It does not have a sideways glide. It has a straight glide. It'll keep gliding after you stop reeling. Of course, if you twitch it, you can get it to do the swim thing. You kind of have to learn the bait and you can get it to swim. That's with any bait though. On a straight retrieve, this thing does this. It's like a little arrow. Who knows, maybe a bass wants that. Who knows? Yeah, it's not, it's definitely not that hard to get it to swim. I like it. Even though there's no action on a straight retrieve, I like it. I love this place. It's just a pond behind you. There's a pond in front of you. It's incredible. I'm about ready to call it if you are. Last cast. I have all the fins still. We already got some weeds coming in. Trees are looking good though. And they've actually been shooting roots for like two weeks now. Planted them about two weeks ago. I planted those two weeks ago. Wow, that was a long video. I don't know exactly how many casts you can perform in two and a half hours, but that's how much mileage this bait's got. And it's looking pretty good for having those thin, delicate fins everywhere just glued in. So the plan is that this week, next week, it's Saturday, next week, 
I'm going to try to fulfill some obligations, some bait legations. All the winter baits I'll be fishing with next week. And another very, very special bait that is a complete surprise, way out of left field. No one's going to be able to guess what that bait is, but another lure review probably. Why am I telling you my plans? This bait will be fished with again very soon. I'll do my best all next week. I'm going to fish every day and make a big winter bait legation video. Am I saying that right? I just thought of that off the top of my head. That could be really dumb and I'm wrong about that. Obligation bait legation. And for the first time, I think, this year, enjoy the bonus fishing. I ran into a big beaver. So you can... Why am I telling you what's in the bonus fishing? What? On to the next bait. That is going to take care of business. Picking up right where we left off in the last video, but instead I'm launching the boat in an appropriate location. Apparently that's crucial. Let's not get cocky. We're on the water and we're floating, and I have a fishing pole. I brought one rod, spinning setup. We're gonna fish with slightly smaller stuff, a bunch of epic bait molds, baits, essentially. I really just wanna see if I can get to the river from here with the water this high. That's really why I'm here. <laughs> but if I happen to catch fish, that's cool too. A lot of ducks this year. It's a good year for ducks. I tell you what. Something really big just moved off of that. It's like it's leaving a bigger wake than my kayak. Must have been a beaver. This is looking better up here. Usually the water just stops. to snake our way through all this. We can fish it all on the way back. Uh-oh. I might be able to just push all this crud out of the way and slip under that stick. Okay. off of my kayak. Smelling some strange gases. I'm kind of scared to go through that pipe. Like what if it sucks me really hard through? What if there's a lot of current? There is two, and then there's like middle and side water going through, so. I think I'm gonna go through the pipe. All right, one sec. What am I gonna do with my paddle? Lay it in front. There's no wind in here at all. Ouch. It's getting kind of short. I have to hold the camera up for you guys to see. <laughs> what if there was someone fishing like right there and they didn't know I was coming?
Okay. Some big river current right there. Okay. Let's try to make it back through the pipe with the current not working with me. This should be interesting, fellas. That wasn't bad at all. Oop. Let's not go back in. Oh, what am I doing? Fish on! Finally, that took all day. I've been fishing for over three hours. And look who it is. Large Margaret. Let's open up that bale. It's official, fellas. It's been official for a long time, but bass like three inch prey baits. <sighs> 2022. Just getting started. Be free. A fantastically chunky little river bass was way the heck up here. Fantastic. <laughs> is it is this dude okay? Are you okay, dude? Caught a nice bass. <laughs>